Pax A or Pax B? Which one do you need? Which one is better? Today, we will use our blast chamber to find out how much pressure Pax A or Pax B will hold. So what are Pax A and what are Pax B? Well, first of all, Pax stands for cross-linked polyethylene. Now, we've got two pieces of pipe and I'm gonna cut them down here so I can show you. If you look at Pax A and Pax B, they're pretty much the same, or at least they look it. Now, there are some differences. The Pax A and Pax B are determined by the way they're manufactured. They should be about the same size on the inside and on the outside, but, the big differences that you get into are the, the Pex A is flexible. It expands. It's actually a cold expansion joining mechanism. So what happens is to put Pex A together, you actually put in an expansion tool, make it bigger, then you put the fitting in, and it's a memory pipe, meaning the pipe itself and the expansion ring on the outside all want to return to their original size and shape. So you expand it, you pull it out, then you've got a few seconds, you stick the fitting inside, and for the rest of the lifetime of that pipe, it's trying to reduce down to its original size, to its normal size. Another thing about Pax A is it's flexible. The good thing about it is you can get tighter radiuses, you can make better looking turns and stuff like that, where if you bend it too far, guess what? It's not made to be that flexible, it will actually kink just like that. Now, Pex B, you can never get back to its normal size. You can try to heat it up, you can try to do a lot of different things, but you're always gonna have that reduced pipe size. Now, Pex A, guess what? It'll kink too. Even though you've kinked it, you can take a heat gun and get it back to where you want it to be. So we're gonna put together a couple of pieces, then we're gonna put them in the blast chamber and see how well they do pressure-wise. To be honest, I think the Pex A is gonna do better. Why? Because it's made to expand, it's made to be more flexible. To be honest, if I were building a, pipe, a house anywhere and I were putting pipes up in the attic, which I hate that idea, but somehow somebody came up with that wonderful idea, I would know that I could put this in, it's gonna expand and it's also gonna contract a little bit and probably not burst near as often as Pex B or copper would. As we know, copper is not made to expand at all. It normally freezes and breaks. So we'll find out here in a minute. So as you can see, we're in the blast chamber now. We've put everything together. We locked it in with our high pressure fittings. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up here and turn the water on. So at the same time, I've got my bleeder valve open. So if you heard it, that was the air coming out. So now I'm gonna reach up here and shut off the water. So now you know, we can look at it and I'm, a, I'm, I'm looking at a thousand pound gauge, so I'm not showing a lot of pressure there. But if I come over here and look at it, I've got 50 PSI, which is about normal for where we're at. I don't have anything leaking inside. I've got 50 PSI. This is about what it would be like for a normal house installation. Now, I've got Pex B in here. You can tell by the rings that I have on. Now, as we're trying to make leaks, remember, this video is sponsored by Leak Pro, the best leak detection system for your plumbing. If you're a plumbing company owner or just a plumber and you want to learn how to make more money, check out Leak Pro, www.leak-pro.com. Y'all ready? Here we go. Hell, I was watching this, I never even looked over here. The spot couldn't be better, right on top. The thing to remember on Pex A is remember your rings. 
Remember your expansion rings? And they go, only go on one way. So now I've got my pipe prepped and ready to go. Now, as you see, like we talked about, you can't get this in. Now you can also tell that this is PEX-A because it's got this one big barb here in the middle. They do that so that it's constantly squeezing down on it and not gonna slide off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out. I'm gonna squeeze it down, make sure it goes all the way in. And this is literally squeezing itself back down right now. One piece right there, ready to go. Okay, so this time, as you can tell, well, we have the PEX A in the Upanor. So I'm gonna do just like I did before. Ooh, we're back with Pex B. Are y'all ready for this one? Let's see what happens. Perfect. I kept spinning it and turning it and looking and I thought I'm gonna stop right there. Randy, it is 12 o'clock. Well, it is in my blast chamber. I mean, that's gonna look cool because that water came straight up. Yeah. Now guys, we're back to Pex A. This is our last one today. And really so far, I'm kind of surprised. Pex B has gone up over 1100 PSI. Pex A didn't make it up to 1000, but I went full blast, full pressure last time. So I'm gonna turn it on slow like I did the last Pex B and let's see what it does. So the testing is complete. So what we figured out is, man, it really does surprise me. Pex B, the first piece, 1151 PSI. Pex B, the second piece, 1053. That's 100 PSI difference. Pex A, the first one, 959. Pex A, the second one, 910. Now, here's the deal. Don't get me wrong your water pressure at your house should never get that high. And I know you plumbers out there complaining right now, well, Roger, it's never gonna get that high. I get it, but wouldn't you want what's gonna test well and above? That's what it's all about, and that's why we do what we do. I will tell you this, nothing leaked at any of the fittings. All the crimp connections, all the expansion connections, none of those leaked, dripped, or anything. Go back and look through the slow motion. It did fine. Guys, if you love this, you're definitely gonna love the next one.